Uh, the second part of this DVD is aimed at tip launch glider and I have asked once again Stan Budenbaum if he would donate a tip launch glider kit for this project and he did. This is a model called the uh, Dynamite. The kit includes all balsa parts, pop-up tail boom with the carbon fiber fuselage. It also has a timer installed and it has a bag that has in it uh, some of the small parts that are needed for the model. If you wanted to uh, build this model you would also need to order a set of the plans. Uh, they come extra. So the dynamite uh, plans are two sheets and the whole thing is available for you for $62 uh, and then the plans are in addition to that. Now I've gone ahead and started the construction of this model because I wanted to get a head start on uh, compressing the, the video so that it doesn't take quite so much time. What you get when you buy the kit is a uh, two wing blanks. They're slightly oversized. This is um, uh, the wing blank for the, the right wing. Uh, the left wing has already been uh, cut and shaped and I've glued the uh, leading edge uh, basswood to it. But I want to show you how I do this before we get too far along. The first thing I've done is I've made a template for the dynamite wing. Now the plans show this template, show this size and shape for that wing. I've just taken a piece of uh, manila folder and traced that uh, wing onto this folder section, cut it out, and I've got it marked you can see there's the high point for the airfoil, here's the dihedral break, and, and uh, with, what I'm going to do here is draw this onto this piece of balsa wood. Now, I should point out to you that the balsa wood comes already uh, shaped, the trailing edge is pretty much shaped, it needs to be thinned out a little bit more, and, and he has tapered the tip out here so you don't have to carve and sand quite so much out on the tip. So if I place this <clears throat> onto the uh, wing in this fashion, I can draw around it and, and get the location for the dihedral joint and all the other things that are needed. Um, this is a sharpie pen and I'll just trace around this to show you how it works. There's a notch right here. This is for the dihedral joint. There's another notch right here, which is at the high point. And you trace along in this fashion all the way up across the tip. So I take this off, and here you see uh, the various locations. This is the dihedral break right there, and here's the center of the dihedral break. If you read the plans uh, carefully, you'll notice that the dihedral break is slightly offset and that gives it a, a washout effect on the tips. So the next thing to do is to figure out where the high point uh, needs to go. The reason I'm going to mark this is because there's some sanding involved and you need to sand up to the high point from the trailing edge and you need to sand up to the high point from the leading edge. So here's how this all works. Here's how I do it at least. I use the template. I line it up with the high point mark there and also at the tip. I simply draw a line along that curve and that's the high point for the tip. The high point for the main panel is uh, drawn with a straight edge. I'll use this piece of uh, plywood which comes with the kit as my straight edge and uh, I'll just uh, mark it as well using the same felt pen. So that's the high point. The next step is simply to cut this outline out and I use a sharp X-Acto knife for that purpose. I won't show you that at this point uh, but what I did want to show you is that uh, once the wing panel is all cut out, this is the left half, then you need to glue on the supplied strip of basswood. This is a piece of 1 16th by approximately uh, 3 16th thick basswood. Uh, you wet the tip 
you can glue it on with um, uh, CYA or JET or any of those. I still use uh, an aliphatic resin like site, like tight bond. This is Sig bond, and and uh, I get it nice and wet and damp, I should say, and I pin it in place. Pin the pin the wing down, and then I pin the uh, basswood onto the leading edge. The purpose for that is to give you a, a stronger, more impact resistant leading edge. Quite often uh, these models will hit things like fence posts and the like and that helps to keep the uh, wing intact uh, by absorbing that impact. So let's unpin it, uh, see what we've got here. This has been allowed to dry for about an hour and a half, I think, something like that. And there you are, there you have it. Um, you notice the wing has been, this tip's been tapered so that the um, basswood actually extends a little bit off the side. And then what you're to do at this point is to sand it. So I'm going to show you uh, how to shape the wing. And uh, when I shape a wing blank, I use uh, two. Uh, different methods. One is I use a razor plane. With a razor plane I can uh, bring off thin uh, sheets of balsa and I can shape it without cutting grooves or gouges in the in the wing itself. Then I go to a, a 120 grit sandpaper and then I finish it up with 220 grit. So it's the same as I've used on the catapult glider. Now what I've done, this is the uh, left wing, left half of the wing, and you'll notice that the, the high point is still pretty much all there, although most of it's gone at the, at the tip. And if, it, uh, if you sand it away, I would suggest you remark it so you, when you're doing your work on this airfoil, you know exactly where the high point is. It's an important feature for the flight of the model. The next step, however, at this point, is to shape the leading edge. And what I've done with this wing is I have already sanded the underside of this leading edge so that it comes up more like a sharp edge, like shown on the plans. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the flat, which Sam describes in the, in the uh, plan. I just set the angle, put the wing right at the edge of the, of the uh, sanding board, and I just begin sanding in this fashion. And I hold the same angle all the way out to the tip. Now I can just very lightly sand off the very front of that piece of basswood. Round it slightly. And my wing is pretty much finished. I've marked this as the root so that I don't get the two wing halves mixed up. And I think this I can put this aside and uh, we'll go on and finish up the other wing at this point in time. And I'll show you how to glue in the dihedral angles next. We're going to cut the polyhedral angle on this wing this time. And um, during the course of the sanding I had obliterated the marks that showed where that angle was. However, I had marked them on the bottom, so I've just transferred them over to the top now. I've got a very sharp X-Acto knife here, but I'm going to start the cutting in, uh, from the leading edge back to the trailing edge. The reason is sometimes if you're not careful, you can re release the glue on the leading edge strip, the basswood that you've already glued there, and it makes it a, it makes it a pain to glue it back in shape. So we're just going to trace along this line. It'll take a bunch of cuts before we get it. You want to make sure you're cutting as vertically as possible. And there we are. Now we have two sections of this wing. We're going to uh, sand it for dihedral and then we'll glue it together. So uh, we're going to try to get 
uh, an angle that allows this dihedral to be glued in at three inches, which is what the plans show. So I've got this piece of one eighth inch balsa here I'll use as a, balsa, as, a, uh, as a block. But in the meantime, I've got to sand this angle. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll just line this up by using, using a little block of uh, uh, material here to keep the wing panel um, at an angle. And I'll just sand downwards on this using the, the whiteboard, this shelving material, as my guide. This is the tip. We'll sand it. Now let's see what it looks like. Like I just about have it. So the next step is to glue the tip dihedral or polyhedral into each of the wing panels. Now I've shaped them, uh, I've sanded them down so I have a good airfoil section on it. And here's how I do that. Here's how I glue them together. I use um, Zappa Gap. This is a CA. I put it on the uh, joint after I've pinned the main panel in place. I cover this entire area here with this cement and I slide it in place moving it slightly to make sure I've spread the, the glue out. I'll pin it, to hold it so it doesn't slide away from the main panel that's pinned in place. Then I'll take my 3 inch dihedral brake measuring device and I'll pin it in place at the tip. Now if I feel like it needs a little bit more um, pressure on it, um, maybe a pin there, hold it in place. Uh, there's a slight gap there which I will fill later with some more of this cement. We'll do the other panel in the same fashion. Hold it pretty much at the angle you think it should be. This um, stuff dries, cures fairly fast, about 30 to 45 seconds is typical. And um, that's it. Uh, we'll come back in a few minutes and, uh, and take these off and then we'll do the main uh, dihedral at the center section. Well, the next step after the two wing tips have been glued onto the main panels in the proper dihedral is to do the dihedral for the main panel here. The, main, the, the dihedral angle or the dihedral amount for the dynamo for this model is a um, is 13 sixteenths on either side. So I've got I've got this side already pinned in place, and it's got the appropriate amount of incidence to it. And the next one is to uh, glue this one in place. So I've got a 13 16 inch block here. I'm going to uh, put a liberal amount of, of uh, CYA on this here. And we'll shove it in place and pin it in place. So there. Make sure it's lined up at the leading edge. The trailing edge looks like it's in good shape. Put one up here as well, and uh, we'll just let it uh, we'll just let it cure for a little bit. Uh, our next step after the wing has uh, cured and you've removed it from the building board is to install dihedral braces. The dihedral Braces are 132nd plywood. Um, Stamps kits in, include uh, a strip of this, like this, and uh, they're inset in the, each of the wing angles uh, at the tips and also in the main panel in here. And to get them, here's what you do. This is a this is a hacksaw blade, which happens to be exactly 132nd of an inch thick, as all of them are. I understand. 
and you are going to saw a groove right through the high point of the airfoil. And what I do is I um, put my finger on the other side of that dihedral joint and you can, if you saw for a while, like that, you can feel the saw blade. You don't want to cut your finger, but you can feel the saw blade just starting to break the surface. And when, when it's done that, you're done. So you do this to the two tips and you also do it to the main pad. Okay, so the dihedral braces are one 30-second plywood. And after you've cut the slot, like I showed you in the uh, with the hacksaw blade, uh, you put the 132nd plywood in. And what I do is I draw a line so that I know approximately the size of that piece. And then with a pair of old scissors, I just simply cut it out uh, of the plywood. And the next step is simply to, to put a lot of, uh, of uh, thick... CYA in the slot and shove the brace in place. Make sure it's in as far as it'll go. So um, the glue on the dihedral braces is all dried now and so what remains left is just to smooth off the edges. So I'm going to use a thick uh, grit sandpaper and just sand these smooth with the uh, bottom of the wing. That pretty much finishes it up. What we're going to show here is the reinforcement that's given to this model at each one of the dihedral and polyhedral joints. This is some uh, very lightweight fiberglass cloth. Uh, you could also use uh, model airplane silk if you wished. And it's placed over the joint both on the bottom and the top camber and uh, tapered out so that the points of this square um, are pointed span wise. And I'm going to use Duco cement to put it on with. You can use any other kind of uh, acetate based cement. So we'll just, we'll just put enough of it on to hold it in place and we'll smear it with our fingers. Spread it out a little bit so that it covers the entire uh, wing section. A little bit on the dihedral joint proper, uh, which you can cut off afterwards. Once this has dried, uh, a second coat is desirable to make sure that there are no loose ends. And you can use uh, a scissors or a knife to cut off anything that hangs over. So we do this on the top and the bottom of each joint. While the wing is uh, drying, I'm going to move ahead with the stabilizer. The stabilizer has a V shape to it. So it also has dihedral. If you look at the plans, uh, you'll see that the V is two inches on a side. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in two and we're going to assemble it so that it has dihedral in it. And then we need to sand in the dihedral just like we did for the wing. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, I think it looks like it's going to work. Um, I'm going to put some, once again, this is TAP filling, thick CYA. I'll slide it up, make sure it's even fore and aft. Put a pin in place to hold it close to the leading edge. Another one close to the trailing edge. And then I'll put this in, make sure I've got my full two inch dihedral. That's it. Uh, the next thing we're going to tackle is uh, the fuselage. And the fuselage comes in two parts, the front 
uh, the pod, and the boom, the back, which is a piece of uh, carbon fiber, and it's attached to a pivot point, which slides into the fuselage, giving you the, the thermalizer action. This fuselage came with an installed timer. When we work around the timer, we need to make sure that we don't get any anything on it because it'll stop to work, stop working. Uh, so here, it, the fuselage comes a slightly over length, and so I've marked off uh, the shape that I want this fuselage to be. I'm going to cut it back to this point because according to the plans, there's supposed to be a five inch nose moment, this distance here. So I've measured off the five inches, then I'm going to round off the, the uh, front of the model uh, using my uh, trusty bandsaw. So I've uh, cut the front of the boom off, excuse me, the front of the fuselage uh, pod off, and I've done a little bit of sanding to shape it into the shape that I find pleasing. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, glue the stabilizer onto the tail boom. The uh, tail boom, as it comes in the kit, is slightly oversized. The uh, plan tells you how long the tail boom is supposed to be, which uh, on this model is 13 inches. So this distance between the pivot point and the leading edge of the stabilizer is supposed to be 13 inches. I have marked that with a, P, with a little bit of white uh, marking. And then if I put the stabilizer up here like this, I also discover that the tail boom is too long by that amount. So before I glue the stabilizer in place, I want to cut that section off. Now I've pre-marked this, so I'll cut this end of the tail boom off. So I uh, used a razor saw to cut off the very end of this tail boom. I'm going to, with a little bit of wet or dry paper, I'm going to sand off any loose ends that might be there. It's nice and smooth now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it in place. So uh, what, I, what we want to do is to make sure that the stabilizer, when it's glued in place, is in the correct location. It needs to be centered on the boom with a slight bit of, of uh, skew and it needs to be uh, so that it needs to be glued on in such a way that it's not uh, doesn't give you unwanted stab tilt. So making the fuselage uh, tail boom so that it is completely vertical is, is, is important. What I'm going to do now is I'm, I am going to put a drop of thick CYA at the beginning of this, of the leading edge and also at the trailing edge. I'm going to put it in place on the tail boom like so. I'm going to hold it here. It appears as though it's in the correct location. And then I'm going to move over and double check by sighting along. And I'm finding that it's slightly tilted. I don't want that. So it appears to be correct. All I need to do now is to uh, hold it while that CYA cures. So I'll run a bead along the, this joint here. Do the same on the opposite side. And um, we are essentially done with the stabilizer. This is the fin. Uh, as with the stabilizer, I've already put several coats of dope on here and it's ready to uh, install. I'm going to bevel this uh, because it, it fits right along here. So I'm going to bevel this joint to make sure it's going to set well.
and um, once again I'll use the thick CYA. Put a little on the bottom and a little on the side. Hold it in place. We want it to be vertical when the model is upside down like this. We can check it pretty easily. Once again, uh, it's important to hold it in place for 30 to 45 seconds until that COIA sets up. Now, this is the wedding I built uh, earlier, and I, I have since put fiberglass cloth on all of the wing joints, top and bottom, and I have um, rubbed in two coats of Duco cement. Uh, both uh, the top and the bottom and I have four coats of clear dope on the entire wing top and bottom Okay, so the next step is to uh, glue the the wing onto the fuselage And once again for this I'm going to use um, the uh, thick CYA I want to make sure the wing is centered. I may use a couple pins to help me out when the time comes. So this step, I put the glue in here. I, I'm fairly liberal with it because I want it to fill up all the gaps. Center the wing like that. I'll put a pin in the trailing edge. I'll put a pin here in the leading edge. All the way into the fuselage in that fashion. And I'll sight along the fuselage and the wing to see that I have approximately the same amount of dihedral so that the wing isn't skewed one way or the other. It appears to be correct. So uh, I want to make sure that this pod and this wing joint, this joint here between the two, is uh, solid. One of the ways to do that is to put a small bead of, of uh, thick CYA on either side of that joint. I use a swab just to help push it in place and, and to wipe up the excess. I'll put some on this side as well. Uh, so we're about to put a finish coat or two on the fuselage boom. Now the wing has already been done. What I wanted to do here is to point out to you the importance of not getting any dope or any finishing material around this timer. The timer is very sensitive and so for that reason I'm going to put some tape around it so that it I don't slop any, any nitrate dope around it. So I'm going to do that in this fashion, and then I'm going to dope the fuselage. So I've uh, put a couple coats of dope on this fuselage, and I'm now ready to remove the, the little cover I had on the timer. See that it still works? Yep, it does. And I want to install the tail boom because in a moment we're going to show you how to put the dethermalizer in place. In order to do that, we have to have the tail boom located here. So this is a little pivot pin that goes in the fuselage and allows the tail boom to pivot up into a dethermalizer position. It's got a 256 nylon bolt on it and we're going to show you how this installs in the fuselage. Here we go. I push it into the fuselage. We need to line this up a little better in that fashion and I use the nylon 256 bolt on the other side and hold that in place. The thermalizer system comes in a package and um, there are several things which need to happen before we do the fitting. One of them is there's a small piece of plywood that uh, looks like this, it's triangular shape. It needs to be glued onto the wing right at the trailing edge 
and a close to the dihedral joint. It's a reinforcement brace so because the DT string is going to slide along this section of the wing. I'm going to put it in place also with some of this thick CYA. Put it in like that. I'm going to make sure it comes right at the trailing edge and overlaps very slightly the dihedral joint. One of the things I've done on my models which are not uh, specified in the plans is to file a, a notch in this uh, trailing edge brace right here because the DT line is going to slide across the wing and go to the timer and this uh, makes sure that the DT line is always centered in the same place time after time because the amount of pressure that's on the DT line uh, will cause the timer to run slower or faster depending on the amount of pressure that's there. The next step is to take the loop on the timer spring setup and put it over the timer barrel in this fashion. So it's not going to operate the timer and for this purpose of installation it's not important to do that. The next step is to run the string around the top of the wing in this fashion. Now this, the spring is not tight at this point. And then you, you need to put the string through the loop that's underneath the wing. You may not be able to see it, but there's a tiny loop right here. And this string needs to pass through that loop. Once the string passes through that loop, you then wrap it around the fuselage boom, like this, and that holds the boom in place. And then this needle with the with the string through it, I push through the center section of the wing in this fashion. Stan suggests drilling a hole and I think that would be fine too. I find that this system works just as well. We want to pass pass the needle through and then pull it tight, pull the th thread or string tight. We're going to stretch out this spring so that it has some tension to it. Stan suggests, according to his list here, that the uh, spring is stretched two inches. Um, I'm going to put some CYA, this is the thick stuff again, on the string to hold it in place permanently. Now you notice that the string is in this uh, little slot. It's also wrapped around the bottom of the fuselage holding it in place. Uh, we have a little bit of what I call fiddly things to take care of and one of them is the installation of what Stan calls the wire part comes taped to something in your kit and what it is is a rubber band hook and this rubber band hook just sticks into the wing at the center section um, it to come loose so you put a little bit of, of uh, CYA on it and uh, let it cure for a minute uh, there's a kicker that's glued on the on the wing. It shows on the plan, and it's if you're throwing this as a right-hander, this kicker goes on the right-hand tip of the model, so it goes in this fashion. Stan provides it as part of the kit, and all you need to do is glue it on there. It's a it's a trimming piece. So by now this thing should be dry and we'll see how well the DT system works as soon as I put a rubber band on it. Stan also provides a number of rubber bands with your kit. Rubber band goes on there, fastens onto the wire piece, then all you have to do is release the 
line that's now around your timer barrel. So we may need another rubber band. Oh, there it goes. Uh, this may need a little bit of work, but this is how the uh, tow line, <laughs> excuse me, this is how the DT line uh, uh, releases and how the tail boom kicks up and you're ready uh, to, to launch that. Now, uh, Stan's uh, plans show that his models balance at um, an inch and three quarters behind the leading edge. Now, I've marked that location here. And there are different ways to determine how you're going to find out whether that's the right spot or not. But I quite often just use a pin like that stick in. I'll hold on to the pin and see what happens. And we know because there's no lead weight on the front that it's tail heavy. The next step is to find out how much lead you need in order to make it balance. Fortunately, Stan sends along a fairly sizable chunk. Okay, this is a piece of sheet lead. I've cut it uh, so that it kind of fits the front of the fuselage. I'm going to glue it in place here uh, using some thick CYA and then we'll check to see how the model balances after I have this in place. Once again I just I just hold this in, in its proper location until the glue sets up. Put the pin back in and we'll see where it balances. My hunch is it's still a little tail heavy. No, well, maybe not. The next step is to uh, prepare the tip because these are launched with a grip that's in this fashion. So the thumb goes underneath and the index finger goes in this fashion. And in order to help that grip, uh, we glue on some, uh, some rough, this happens to be uh, 320 letter dry sandpaper. Uh, other people use heavier uh, 100 or 120s or whatever, but I think for our purposes this is going to be adequate. A little bit of duco smeared on there, center it so that it's in place, right about there, maybe a little closer in. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So we now have the grips in place, the timer works, the tail pivots. I think uh, other than doing some uh, the usual spray painting of the tips, putting on your AMA numbers and the like, you're pretty much ready to fly this model. So here is my model. Uh, you notice it's had a little bit of battle damage. Um, uh, chip out of the stabilizer. But it, this one has a little wingtip weight and what I found when I was flying this airplane is that it didn't go into the glide as easily as I thought it should. So I added some wingtip weight in order to control the glide. Also the weight in this model, instead of gluing it to the outside of the fuselage, I cut away part of the uh, balsa center to the plywood fuselage and put the weight inside there. So it's a little more streamlined. And I did the same thing I showed you earlier on the catapults. I spray painted some uh, brightness and also spray painted some black so that this model can be seen in the air and on the ground. A little bit of decoration over here just to make it distinctive. So this model is ready to fly and uh, the next step is to go out and, and try it.